Consider something we take for granted in everything from cell phones to cars to video games. It's called haptics, vibrations and other physical sensations that enable our technology to talk back to us through our sense of touch. At Harvard, scientist and engineer Shriya Srinivasan is thinking about those physical feedback loops every time she performs an ancient dance. I've been dancing since I was very young. The ideas around movement and sensory feedback have been percolating in my brain for a long time. When I dance, of course, I'm intimately aware of my body and its movements. What the audience feels, however, may be limited by their conditioning or what they can perceive visually. I am a biomedical engineer by training. And at some point, I, I started to wonder, can we use the receptors in our skin to communicate the complexity of the rhythms that are embedded within the choreography? And would that enable the audience to experience then the dance to a higher dimension? Shriya turned her curiosity into an engineering problem. Could she share the rhythmic complexity of the choreography as she feels it in her body with the audience? To find out, she and her dance company co-founder, Joshua George, are conducting trials at Harvard's motion capture lab. So we're gonna grab this metatarsal point. The motion capture system reads and records the position of the dots placed on Joshua in order to create a digital version of his movements and understand the biomechanics of the dance. But more importantly, we're interested in capturing what's not readily visible to the eye. So muscle activation, for example, or forces um, to the ground. Now can you flex your biceps? Audience members can see the movements, but they can't feel the force of a step or a jump. If you think about how humans interact, we like shaking hands, we like hugging. So being able to tap into that sense of touch, or as it's sometimes called embodiment, is a gateway into allowing you to be and experience something that you're not immediately doing. For example, it'd be great to feel how a dancer moves. So as you flex the bicep, you can see in yellow the activation of that muscle. We have these reflective markers that we put on someone. We have them do a certain movement. We take that information and kind of convert that into body movement um, quantitative data. What we think of as haptics embedded in technology has roots in aviation. As planes advanced, pilots no longer felt mechanical vibrations in the controls when the plane was about to stall. So haptics were used to replace these vibrations artificially, preserving the warning. Haptics is super critical, very innovative in the design process because it has the ability to really blend the physical world with the digital world. In our analog world, haptics were everywhere. Things felt. You pushed a button on your radio and the button went to clink and you could feel it. My brain is evolved to sense whether that action that I've taken with my finger has resulted in a, um, a, an actual an effect. Shri's team is applying this concept to dance. Take a feel and see what you think. And the team is using modern technology to develop it. At the moment, we're using two different types of haptics on the phone. So we can set them at different intensities, different sharpness. We can also vary how long they are. We're able to then assign a haptic pattern or a vibration pattern to that move and have it happen yeah. at that time during the song or during the performance. They're under pressure to work out the kinks. They're giving a performance the next day, and they hope to work with the audience to test the system. Okay. Yeah, I think we're set for Friday. Besides enhanced dance performances, Shriya's lab is also using haptics to do research to help medical patients with muscle spasticity move more smoothly. They're asking if vibration feedback can reduce the symptoms of spasticity, a condition that causes muscles to stiffen, making them difficult to move, often as a result of spinal cord injury or traumatic brain injury. ALS, multiple sclerosis, or cerebral palsy. Patrick Parasol, a PhD candidate, is one of Shriya's students. 
with spasticity, it feels like someone is holding your limb in place. Anytime you want to move, you have to struggle against yourself. In the motion capture lab, Shriya is working on a potential solution. The nervous system is kind of like an orchestra, and conducting it is the brain, sending signals, but also receiving feedback about which parts are playing what. And having them work together is the key to executing movement and moving seamlessly in the world. In typical arm motion, the bicep contracts to bend the arm at the elbow, while the tricep relaxes, and the tricep contracts to straighten the arm while the bicep relaxes. The device that they're building is designed to pick up activation of one muscle and then mechanically tell the opposite muscle to relax. In a patient with spasticity, for example, there's co-contraction. So as your bicep contracts, your tricep is also contracting. And that causes that movement to be rigid. So we're targeting the biceps and triceps. Let me know if it's too tight. Biomedical engineering okay. requires a fundamental understanding not only of the basic engineering principles like mechanics, electronics, and uh, computer science, but also of the fundamental properties of the biology of the human body. Step one, put the prototype system on student volunteer Annie and use it to collect data with a simple reflex test. We've attached EMG sensors, so EMG is electromyography. We're going to record the activation of her muscles and then display it on this laptop. Yeah, I think it would, that, that was. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that was a stronger. Yeah, yeah. Step two, measure the amount of muscle activation when the device vibrates to see if the activation goes down. So now we're gonna turn on the vibration. Here, what we're looking at is, can we apply vibratory stimuli at just the right time at the, at the right amount and the right parameters to relax the relevant muscles to allow for more free movement? Yeah. All right, so now it should be stimulating on the bicep. Can you feel it on your bicep? Yes. Yep, right there. All right, great. The next step, preliminary analysis of the motions. The hope is that vibration reduces unwanted muscle activation so they can use vibrations in their device to relax the targeted muscles. If they can demonstrate that, then eventually they plan to build a device that will detect activation in one muscle and determine which other muscle to deactivate. Begin. Boosting flexibility Two. and restoring motion. In today's test, Relax. the device is giving them encouraging data, confirming vibration as an effective strategy for relaxing specific muscles brings them one step closer to developing a therapeutic device for spasticity. The feeling that we were able to, what appears to be successfully, relax those muscles with vibration was a very good feeling because it means that we're one step closer to help people with spasticity move more easily. From one test to another. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Decoded Rhythms. The human nervous system... The first opportunity for Shriya and her dance company to add a layer to the performance through haptic feedback. Sensation is the gateway to the human experience. Audience members download an app, and as they watch and listen, they'll feel synchronized vibrations. We're hoping that the audience can be more in tune with the performance by giving them this sort of understanding haptically what the dancers are doing. I thought it was a good work in progress demo. Most of the technology aspects worked well, everything synced. And it was exciting to just see initial, people's initial reactions to it. I love this. Um, I'm an ex-ballet dancer. There's something about having this motion and movement in my hand, but I felt I was moving along with you, and that was really cool. Combining two worlds, each adding a bit to the other. I would say that the data that we're gathering from the dance work, the biomechanics, the ability to classify movements, to interpret intent, 
all of those higher level insights uh, will guide us in the development of patterns for um, patients with spasticity.